Today I'm going to show you some of the lesser known tools available in Train's Content Manager, including fixing errors in downloaded assets and the View Assets option, as well as using pick lists in Content Manager, just to mention a few. So let's get into it. The Manage Contents option in the Tain SP3 has been carried across to TRS 2019, unchanged as far as I can tell. So, while this tutorial is done in Tain, it fully applies to the upcoming TRS 2019. Feedback I've had from friends who enjoy trains of one version or another often say they would like to see an up-to-date tutorial on some of the more vague features of Content Manager. So here it is as well as some basic instructions and ways to get rid of the dreaded red coloured faulty items listed. To get there, I'll select the Tain SB3 icon on my desktop and then get Tain started. And up comes the Content Manager screen. It will normally default to a display of the installed assets and you can select the sequence that suits you. You can sort by name or by status. Each column can be clicked twice, which changes the display sequence from ascending order, such as the letter A first, to descending order, with special characters first, followed by Z or Z first. In the top menu, you have the File option, then the Edit option, with stock standard Copy and Paste, the Developer option, with the obligatory and often used Rebuild Database option, as well as the Show Logs option, which is handy for reporting a bug, for instance. And finally, the Content option, with a long list of functions here, a couple of which we'll explore later. Below the menu, there is the Filter, which is a very powerful function. It allows you to drill down to see exactly what you want, such as faulty items, or maybe that's something I don't like to see, but must see to fix any errors you can. The worst of which is the greyed out unknown assets error, which I find tiresome, and a gigantic time waster, as I rarely seem to be able to do anything about it. This error usually means the item is dependent on a third party website or is no longer available to download, having been declared obsolete. You could try searching for the keyword, the asset reference number, on Google or whatever search engine you use, but I rarely find that works. Maybe the best thing to try could be to ask on the Trains forum if you don't mind investing the time. There are several help items on this subject on the Trains portal. Or read the wiki files. There is a link below this video in the description. So now I'll move into some more useful tricks. One of the most useful tricks, even more useful in Contact Manager than Download Station, is the ability to explore an asset, including a full colour high res image that you can manipulate, as well as many statistics. So let's look at an example. Say I want to search for a suitable bridge. Starting in the installed base, I always look there first. I'll do a search on the keyword bridge. Note that capitalization does not seem to matter here and the result shows I have hundreds to consider. See the actual number at the bottom of the screen. So let's shorten the list. I want a How Trust Bridge. In my search there are two, a narrow three foot version and a standard gauge one. Here's a tip, I generally don't get so specific, as sometimes the actual position of the keywords can affect the result. For instance, if I enter Trust Bridge, I tend to get a better range of choices. So it pays to try a couple of different searches. Here I'll get 18 to check out. But unlike the download station, here I don't have any image to see what we actually have. Ah, but yes we do. What is required is a select one. I'm going to check out the Pennsylvania Pratt Truss. So, right click it, move down to the open menu item, and then preview asset. Voila! Here is a high definition rotating view, which I can further manipulate with my mouse. There are hotkeys if you prefer. I use the mouse. I can stop the rotation by left click with the mouse, 
Then using the right mouse button, I can view from any angle over the full 360 degree spectrum. I can zoom in and out, but success with the zoom depends on where the center has been set by the author of the product. This one does not let me view underneath very successfully. So let's try a building. I'll enter the letters C and R, and here we get a large selection. But I think I'll drill down by adding station. Now there's just seven choices. Let's pick New Hamburg Station. And this lets me see if it's the one I want. Again in high definition. This should be a definite help to picking a model nearest to what you want. Sadly this does not work in the filter of download station, only in the installed filter. I have tried some other filters with no success either. So there is a very powerful tool to speed up your route or session building. I'll cover pick list fully in a separate video later. But just quickly, if I find something I definitely want to use, I can add it to the pick list from right here. Let's say the Hamburg station. Just right click, go right to the bottom of the screen I've just opened, position over the add to pick list menu option, and it will provide a menu of pick lists I've already created. But as this is a railroad station, there is nothing truly suitable. But all is not lost. You can add a pick list right here and now if you want. In case you don't know what a pick list is, here's an example of opening and using a pick list in Surveyor. Now, I'm back into Trains SP3 Surveyor in the Pennsylvania and Ohio route. And I am viewing the station at Hollow Lake. But remember I added a new pick list category of stations and depots to the pick list. So let's check that out. Just note that pick list is universal, not just applicable in a particular route. I'll go to the top bar and the third icon along the bar at the top will display the last pick list I used. And there is the Hamburg station already in the list. What I'll do now is add the station Hollow Lake into the pick list. I'll select the Objects tab, hit the Object Identify button here, pop it over the station I want to find on the object list, and there it is. Then I just select it with the mouse and move it across to the item shown in this pick list. And it's that easy to add a new object into the list, just to show the power of the list I might want to add the Hamburg station into the route somewhere. So in the pick list, I select the Hamburg station. And it immediately highlights the object in the object list. Then I just select the add plus sign and can place it on the route wherever I want. That's the power of the pick list. I may do another video looking at the pick list in more depth, including ways to use it later. Just let me know in the comments section if you'd like that. The release of this tutorial for trains enthusiasts will only be successful if I can get some constructive feedback from you. I hope you can get some time to give me this feedback. There are several ways to do this. One, use the like button. It's a simple way to have your voice heard and may give me a general impression. Or there is an even more useful way, that is to use the comment section below this video to be more specific with your opinions. My main reason for doing these tutorials is to help all train simulator fans, be they trains, Dovetail Train, SimWorld, and a number of other train simulators out there. So, to help you watch this space as I listen and learn from your feedback, please consider subscribing to my channel and ring the bell on the right side. That way, you'll always get a notice when I upload something new. And don't forget the various train simulator forums. That's another way to link with the community and is why the various train sim communities are so great. In the meantime, I hope I can catch up with you next time I upload one of these tutorials. Okay, that's it from me for now. So hooroo from down under.